What is up guys and welcome back to another video. So you can see right here we have our donor 12cm housing for our H1C. So this is a 95 WH1C off of a P-Pom truck and we're going to be swapping a 12cm housing that is a famous swap for the most part in the first gen world uh, and we're getting rid of our 21cm H1C housing. So this should yield much better spool up and just manners overall. Everybody always claims that this is a complete 100% drop in swap, whether you just swap the 12 cm housing or you swap the entire charger and put an HX35 in it. Now, whether that's true, that's to be debated, honestly. Um, things do need slightly modified in my opinion. And that factory downpipe is junk. I think it should be done away with, and you should get a 4-inch aftermarket exhaust with a HX40 flange on it and just be done. But, like me today, we're going to fight the downpipe and make it work, because everybody else says that it's doable. And I have done it on others. It is doable. It's just uh, a little bit more work. With the charger removal, obviously, pull off your feeds, drains, downpipe, intake, all that stuff, and then your manifold to turbo bolts. But coming up here shortly, you are going to see the comparison of the 21CM versus the 12CM off the HX and WH1C housing. And it's pretty significant. So right there, just a giant size difference. But with that being said, there's reason for that. And... Just the bulkiness of the H1C housing is just obnoxious. Uh, take notice of the 54mm compressor on your H1C, and the WH1C should have a 56mm compressor. You'll take, we'll need that information later. Alright guys, so one of the biggest takeaways whenever you put this uh, CHRA and compressor side back on your turbine housing is your bolts that bolt the turbine housing I'll try and focus here the four bolts that bolt the turbine housing on um, you want to look at where that that surface mates essentially and make sure it sits level in there because if it does not your wheel will not spin which obviously that would be bad you'd blow up your turbo some of you guys aren't looking to buy turbo quite frankly I don't I don't really care if this blows I mean I have lots of spares lots of options and it really just doesn't matter. But um, another reason to make sure you use the wastegate on this thing, I put a eighth inch or MPT plug, well, pipe nipple on this compressor housing. So the wastegate is functional. Um, these are turbos off of P-Pump trucks. So the wastegate placement here would run all the way to the pump and that's not needed here. I just need a reference for the gate so it knows when to open. Uh, my, my AFC has nothing to do with the turbo. The AFC on a V obviously references the head. So that's just uh, a quick run over of what we're doing, but let's get the rest of this thing together. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a new turbo drain gasket and get that put on there. This one actually stayed intact for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I don't. I mean the the thrust play and everything on the on the turbo is fine kind of surprisingly there's no oil anywhere um, yeah it doesn't look bad so I know 
one of the main things with this is I'm gonna fight the downpipe going back on with this, but as the picture um, I showed earlier or I'll show right now, um, these, these V-bands on the back are the exact same size on the HX35 12CM and the 21CM on the H1C. Uh, this charger is also a WH1C that's very similar to an HX35, but not quite the same internally. But they're the same, but the housing where it sits, this will sit farther back uh, towards the firewall. So you have to struggle with that downpipe a little bit, I will say, and I'm probably gonna struggle a little bit with it. So I need to go ahead and get this stuff taken care of, get it put back on, and then we All right, guys, so what I ended up doing, uh, just there's a bolt down on the transmission adapter plate that holds the exhaust up. Just undo that 13 mil, and the exhaust will move a little bit more freely. And definitely want to use a rather large pry bar to push it back because it's a very tight fit. But once you get it pushed back and up uh, mated to the exhaust housing, you can just bump it a little bit with a hammer or whatever you want, and then... Once the clamps are on, just suck it down in it. It makes everything uh, flush and it wasn't far off in the first place, so it'll work. Uh, next is just oil drain, oil feed, and then we'll hook up our wastegate uh, hose that goes up to the compressor housing, which I didn't hook that up because I didn't know which way the compressor housing was gonna be clocked once I got it on. But now that we know uh, and it's mounted, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be a lot easier, so. That's the next steps. All right guys, and as for this oil drain, um, what I did was I heated it up on this bend and just bent it. That's literally all I did. And it seems to have worked well. I'm gonna turn my headlamp on here. So if it washes it out, I'm sorry. But where it goes into the block here, I sat it in and I don't know. You get you get the idea. Once this is out of the way, I don't know why all of a sudden that needs to be in my way. Let's take that off. And it lines pretty much right up. I might have bent it a tad too much, but that is way better than it was. It was like all the way out here, and this brought it right back up where it needed to be. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna tighten the hose clamp down and the bottom and put that on. And I believe I've got my housing tightened down good. So, yep, we're spinning free. No rubbing, it sounds like. So it's all seated. And yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm about ready to make some noise here shortly. Unfortunately, the oil drain set me back a little bit. I did not anticipate that. Uh, other guys never don't really, I don't know. In the past one where I've done this, I haven't had that issue, so I'm I'm very surprised, but it is what it is, and it's part of it. So if you guys have that same problem, that's what I did. And like I said, this housing just moves where stuff's at a little bit. So it moves the downpipe back, it moves the oil drain a touch forward. So just a heads up there. All right, well, you guys heard me say that we will need to know those compressor specs later in the video, and, well, disaster struck. So I blew that that turbo up on the test drive. Essentially, I did not realize that a H1C from the factory is a 546021. And the WH1C that I was using was a 566012. But on the compressor side, that compressor had a 2 millimeter bigger compressor wheel but the compressor housing also had a map groove, which helps with surging. So that 54 millimeter compressor that I had in the H1C and the lack of map groove that was in the H1C housing, let the turbo surge just cruising at 10 PSI. You could feel the turbo surge really bad. And that is super hard on thrust bearings, especially thrust bearings that are like 28 years old and already on their way out. So it started making lots of metally noises, and that turbo didn't make it very long. So, with that being said, uh, take that into account whenever you're swapping this stuff around. You can only swap a 12CM housing on, 
but they never have that great of manners on a 54 millimeter H1C. So if I was to give some advice, I would just swap the entire HX35 itself on, so you will have your map groove, and you can have your compressor that you want. Uh, with that being said as well, HX35s are not all one spec. There are 54 millimeter HX35s, and the turbo I ended up putting on here is just that. The automatic VP44 trucks are a 54, 60, 12, and the other ones are a 56, 60, 12. So keep that in mind, but these chargers are set up for this, so they have map grooves and they aren't going to blow up. Now that I'm done giving you random whole set information, here is the photo that you've been looking at. This is the new full HX35 off of an automatic VP44 truck. It is a 546012W, which stands for wastegate. Um, I threw that on today. It does spool good. Uh, some boost comparisons. Uh, the H1C made 21 PSI of boost. And this is making 19 currently, which is right on par with what the VP44 trucks make. So that wastegate is blowing open at 18 to 20 PSI currently. So I will need to make a wastegate adjustment to adjust it around 30 PSI. And I need to make some AFC adjustments to get some more pre-boost fuel, which is going to be your star wheel adjustment. But the fuel comes on really hard once you're way into boost but it needs to come in just a little bit earlier and it'll help keep everything clean and it'll also just have better manners but let's go ahead and take a look at this next picture and at cruising boost i was seeing only two to three psi with h1c at 60 to 65 miles an hour as to where now i'm seeing six to seven psi and i noticed it pulls hills much better and doesn't seem like it's working it as hard so that is also just some nice short ob observations i made and i'm very happy with how it's driving right now and it'll be a lot better with the wastegate and afc tuning so our next videos will be to do with that and to see how it picks up and i'll also take some videos in the cab and us ripping on it a little bit and also enjoy this burnout video will it